Well, good afternoon, everyone. We were just letting people in as we begin our session of the annual public meeting. Bonjour à tous. Uh, welcome to the Royal Canadian Mint's 2021 annual public meeting. And thank you for logging into our webinar. While we are conducting this meeting remotely, it is important to acknowledge that it is being broadcast from the traditional unceded territory of the Anishinaabe Algonquin Nation. The Algonquin people have lived on this land since time immemorial. We are grateful to have the opportunity to be present on this territory. My name is Simon Kemel. I am the Vice President, Corporate and Legal Affairs and Corporate Secretary at the Royal Canadian Mint. And it is my pleasure to be your Masters of Ceremony. Je me nomme Simon Kemel. Je suis le Vice President des Affaires Générales et Juridiques et Secrétaire de la Monnaie Royale Canadienne. Et il me fait plaisir de vous accueillir à notre Assemblée publique annuelle 2021. The purpose of our annual public meeting is to give the public a greater understanding of how the Mint operates, to share our achievements, and to be open and accountable to those who care about our business and employees. We will start off by hearing from Ms. Phyllis Clark, who, as Chair of the Mint's Board of Directors, will provide the Board's perspective on the Mint. She will be followed by the Mint's President and CEO, Marie Lemay, who will walk us through the highlights of 2020. We will continue with remarks from Jennifer Camlon, Senior Vice President and Chief Financial Officer, who will speak about the Mint's financial performance and current outlook. Nous répondrons ensuite à une sélection de questions qui ont été soumises par le public par l'intermédiaire de apa.monnaie.ca ou APM at mint.ca, l'équivalent en anglais. C'est notre boîte courriel liée à l'Assemblée publique annuelle. Bien que nous n'ayons pas le temps de répondre à toutes les questions pendant notre séance, je vous assure que nous répondrons à chacune d'entre elles par courriel. We will close our session with a special treat for our viewers. Our colleague, Réal Chartier, in Winnipeg, will take you on a virtual tour of the high-speed circulation coin manufacturing facility. I encourage you to remain online for this behind-the-scenes look at how we make the best circulation coins in the world. It is now my pleasure to invite Ms. Phyllis Clark to begin her remarks. Madam Clark. Thank you, Simon, and good afternoon to all our online guests. Bonjour à tous. I want to thank everyone for joining us from across Canada for your understanding as we continue to hold this meeting virtually. Je suis honoré de m'adresser à vous une fois de plus en tant que président du Conseil d'administration de la Monnaie Royale Canadienne un rôle que je suis fier de remplir, rempli depuis trois ans. L'année dernière a été marquée par des défis sans précédent en raison de la pandémie de COVID-19. Néanmoins, je suis fier de dire que les employés, le conseil d'administration et l'équipe de la haute direction ont travaillé main dans la main pour s'adapter rapidement afin de continuer à répondre en toute sécurité aux besoins des nombreux intervenants de la monnaie. Et nous continuons de le faire aujourd'hui. For its part, the board fulfilled its mission virtually throughout 2020, ensuring uninterrupted oversight of the Mint on behalf of the Government of Canada. Similarly, the Mint kept supporting essential sectors of the Canadian economy, domestic and international customers, and Canadians from coast to coast to coast. Throughout the year, the health and safety of employees working on the site and remotely 
was top of mind for both the board and management. The board commends the Mint for implementing strong safety protocols and diligently communicating them to employees to ensure that their health and the integrity of operations were equally safeguarded. On the strategic front, the board maintained a keen focus on long-term sight lines, working in close collaboration with senior management to develop the One Mint vision, which is breaking down barriers to collaboration and focusing our business and operations on circulation coinage and precious metals. We are also taking a comprehensive risk-based approach to decision-making with risk statements and appetites defined as we consider future challenges and opportunities. We have sharpened our focus on the Mint's value proposition. Despite the pandemics accelerating the adoption of e-payments, ongoing research and external consultations show that cash remains a relevant and necessary part of a healthy and inclusive payment environment. I want to take this opportunity to add that the board is very pleased with the Mint's agility in staying within the strategic plan during this time. Employees in Ottawa and Winnipeg excelled in delivering critical services to a host of customers at home and abroad. The integrity of Canada's coin supply and distribution was managed seamlessly throughout the pandemic, ensuring there were no shortages and that Canadians continued to have uninterrupted access to coins. At a time when gold refineries around the world were shutting their doors in compliance with their own country's lockdown orders, the Mint adjusted its operations to keep its refinery open and provide Canadian miners vital cash flow in a time of global crisis. The same was done for financial institutions obligated to settle precious metal transactions when only the Royal Canadian Mint could produce and deliver essential gold bars. The Mint's corporate social responsibility and environmental, social and governance efforts continued as planned, despite the challenges of the year. In recognition of its importance to shareholder oversight, the board has also added ESG to its skills matrix for board members' competency. In the midst of, a, of maintaining vital operations, the Mint still found ways to give back to the community. Employees made a positive impact on local health care systems by using readily available supplies and technology to produce and donate hand sanitizers and face shields. Winnipeg and Ottawa employees joined forces to design and produce the recognition medal to raise fund for funds for children and families experiencing food insecurity during the pandemic. The board is very pleased by the success of this employee-led initiative. The board also recognizes the important role the Mint continued to play in marking themes and milestones of national importance through the launch of commemorative circulation coins. Its close collaboration with the Haida Nation at a deep meeting to the 100th anniversary celebration of the birth of Iljuas Bill Reed. As well, the 75th anniversaries of the end of the Second World War and Canada's signing of the UN Charter continue to highlight shared values and fuel Canadian pride. 
Earlier this year, the Mint played a prominent role in the national observance of Black History Month with the launch of a silver collector coin honoring the Black Loyalists. This meaningful keepsake was developed in close collaboration with the Pla Black Loyalist Heritage Society headquartered in Shelburne, Nova Scotia. The board was very proud to see the Mint launch an exciting suite of precious metal collector coins, marking the 100th anniversary of the launch of the Blue Nose, starting with the 2021 proof silver dollar honoring Canada's famed fishing schooner. The Mint joined the province of Nova Scotia's official anniversary celebration on March 26th, and it will continue to support Blue Nose 100 celebrations throughout the year. We, the board, also recognize that the Mint is devoting time and resources to implementing a number of diversity initiatives that will create a healthier, more inclusive workplace, better aligned with the diversity of the Canadians we serve. In addition of a full-time action plan lead for diversity and inclusion, the recent edition, pardon me, is just one example of the Mint's long-term approach to managing and caring for its people. The board appreciates the hard work of all Mint employees in adjusting to the unprecedented challenges of the pandemic and making sure that the Mint continued to be there for customers and at home and abroad. We look forward to collaborating with the management team to find new ways to deliver value to Canada and customers worldwide while staying on a path to sustainable success. Thank you. Merci. Well, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I will now invite Ms. Marie Lemay, President and CEO, to deliver her remarks. Madam Lemay. Merci, Simon. Alors, lorsque je me suis adressée à vous l'an dernier, nous venions d'amorcer une période de perturbation incroyable provoqué par la situation sans précédent qu'est la pandémie de la COVID-19. À ce moment-là, j'avais espéré pouvoir vous parler en personne aujourd'hui, mais nous nous retrouvons encore une fois en mode virtuel. J'espère que c'est pour la dernière fois. J'attends avec impatience le jour où je pourrai à nouveau rencontrer en personne les Canadiens et les collectionneurs et vous accueillir en toute sécurité dans nos installations de Winnipeg et d'Ottawa. Et pour l'instant, je vous souhaite une cordiale bienvenue à l'Assemblée annuelle de la monnaie royale canadienne en mode virtuel. Et même si je n'ai pas le plaisir de vous voir aujourd'hui, je répondrai avec plaisir aux questions que vous, avez, vous nous avez fait parvenir plus tôt, plus tard pendant notre appel. So while 2020 posed some significant challenges for the Mint, it also highlighted some of the Mint's greatest strengths, including its ability to innovate, collaborate, and respond to the external environment with agility while continuing to deliver profits to Canada and Canadians. I'm proud to say that the health and safety of our employees was at the heart of every decision we made in 2020. In the 15 months since the start of the pandemic, the Mint, the Mint has introduced more than 40 new measures to protect the health of our employees working on site and enhance safety of our facilities. This has meant developing and implementing strict active streaming protocol, installing automatic doors and faucets, introducing new procedures to limit the number of people in our facilities, procuring and distributing tens of thousands of masks, introducing enhanced cleaning procedures, developing a rigorous contact review process, and ensuring that our ventilation and our air filtration system met or exceeded public health guidelines. These measures allowed the Mint to keep operating safely throughout the pandemic without ever shutting down. Au début de la pandémie, 
nous avons pris la difficile décision d'interrompre une partie de nos opérations pour pouvoir concentrer tous nos efforts sur la prestation des services critiques au secteur essentiel des mines et des services financiers. Cette réorganisation des priorités a occasionné une réduction imprévue de notre offre de pièces numismatiques. Et je souhaite une fois de plus prendre le temps de remercier nos fidèles clients et partenaires de leur patience et leur compréhension durant cette période sans précédent. Nous avons reçu des commentaires de plusieurs d'entre vous au cours des 18 derniers mois et tenons à vous remercier de votre soutien continu. Malgré les épreuves liées à la pandémie, la monnaie a pu célébrer certaines réalisations importantes en 2020 et j'aimerais vous en mentionner quelques-unes aujourd'hui. L'une des plus grandes réussites de l'année a été le travail effectué dans notre affinerie. Pendant la pandémie, la demande mondiale de métaux précieux a explosé. Comparativement à 2019, et grâce à nos nouveaux horaires modifiés qui nous ont permis de fonctionner 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours sur 7, l'équipe de la finerie de la monnaie a pu que doubler son volume d'or et dépasser de 30 celui de l'argent. L'équipe a également réussi à conclure plusieurs nouveaux partenariats. Alors que de nombreuses affineries du monde entier ont été contraintes d'interrompre leurs activités et que les chaînes d'approvisionnement mondial étaient en perturbation, la monnaie s'est démarquée en tant que chef de file fiable dans son secteur. Another significant achievement came from our foreign circulation team, whose members were able to find innovative ways of forging new relationships across continents and time zones, despite not being able to travel and signed the largest single denomination order in the Mint history. Behind the scenes, meanwhile, we continued to seamlessly manage the distribution of Canada's coin supply, ensuring that there were no shortage of coins and that continue, Canadians continue to be able to use coins when and where they want or need to. It may seem counterintuitive to talk about shortage of coin, but When less coins circulate and the flow is interrupted, it can quickly lead to shortages. In some jurisdiction outside of Canada, residents were asked to bring their coins back to avoid shortages. We in Canada have a coin management system that allows us to forecast and move coins. With our partners, we position coins strategically during the pandemic to ensure that they remained readily available throughout the country. During the pandemic, we have seen an overall reduction in consumer spending and in a decline in demand of coins. It remains to be seen how the pandemic will influence the rate of this decline, and we are watching this very closely. However, it has reinforced the important role the Mint plays and will continue to play in the coming years as Canada transitions to a cash light economy. We are committed to making sure that no Canadian is left behind in this transition. The valuable data, knowledge, and insights gained from the Mint's coin circulation management system will support a seamless transition to a more digital payment economy and will help Canada be well positioned for resilience in the event of future disaster. Cependant, de toutes les réalisations de la monnaie en 2021, celle dont je suis personnellement la plus fière concerne pas nos activités, mais nos employés. Et très tôt dans le contexte des efforts nationaux de la lutte contre la pandémie, nos employés ont exprimé le désir d'aider les concitoyens canadiens pendant cette période éprouvante. Et vous avez entendu Mme Clark en faire mention, pendant les premiers mois de la pandémie, une petite partie de nos installations a été convertie à la production de désinfectants pour les mains et à la fabrication d'écrans faciaux avec des matériaux dont nous disposions. Nous avons remis des équipements de protection individuelle à des travailleurs de la santé. Toutefois, les employés voulaient en faire plus. And as we entered the summer, the idea of creating a token of appreciation for frontline workers from hospital staff and paramedic to bus drivers and grocery store workers took shape. Employees were the driving force behind our recognition medal project from start to finish. All money raised through the sale of the medal would be donated to the Breakfast Club of Canada, a national organization combating food insecurity. To keep the cost as low as possible, 
In order to maximize donation, the medal was made from recovered materials and was packaged by employees and their family who volunteered their time to work on this project. In the years since we launched the medal, I've been blown away by the generosity of Canadians and the Mint employees. We have sold more than 100,000 medals and have donated $600,000 to the Breakfast Club of Canada to date. You can still support this 40 cost by going to our website and ordering a medal online at mid.ca. Malgré les perturbations causées par la pandémie, nos équipes ont trouvé des moyens novateurs de célébrer les jalons d'histoire canadienne lors du lancement de nos pièces de circulation commémoratives, qui soulignent respectivement le 75e anniversaire de la fin de la Seconde Guerre mondiale, l'anniversaire de la signature de la Charte de l'ONU et le patrimoine artistique de Bill Reed, artiste Haïda légendaire. I'm looking forward to unveiling our 2021 commemorative, commemorative circulation coin in the coming months. Canadians from coast to coast to coast will soon be able to relive the fascinating stories of the discovery of insulin, the Klondike gold rush, and the Blue Nose's legendary exploits. Against the backdrop of the pandemic, work continued in collaboration with the Board of Directors to develop the Mint's long-term strategic vision. And I'm pleased to say our new long-term strategy, which we are calling our One Mint Strategy, launched in January. It was developed with long-term sustainability in mind and will help us make sure the Mint is well positioned to be resilient over the next years to come and able to be responsive to emerging market trends, taking advantage of developments in the external environment while identifying opportunities at home and abroad to ensure sustained profitability. We have called it One Mint because its successful implementation hinges on breaking down silos that exist in every business to work together collaboratively in a way that maximizes efficiency and capitalizes on combined skills and knowledge of every member of team that teams bring to the table. Cette nouvelle stratégie mise d'abord sur l'agilité et l'innovation, des qualités que possède déjà le personnel des Beaux Diamants. Elle place aussi de façon manifeste le bien-être de nos employés au premier plan de notre processus décisionnel, en accordant la priorité à la diversité, à l'équité, à l'inclusion et à la responsabilité sociale d'entreprise en tant qu'éléments fondamentaux de notre culture d'entreprise. Bien que la pandémie continue cette année encore à nous présenter de nouveaux obstacles, la monnaie est bien outillée et préparée à y faire face. Les premiers mois de l'année nous ont confirmé les bénéfices de la mise en œuvre de notre nouvelle stratégie à long terme et je me réjouis des possibilités qui s'offriront à nous en 2021 et au-delà. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, Madame Lemay. J'inviterai maintenant Madame Jennifer Camlon de à prendre la parole. Madame Camlon. Thank you very much, Simon. I would like to advise everyone that certain comments being made today may contain forward-looking statements about the Mint's strategy and expected financial and operational results. Les annoncés prospectifs sont fondés sur l'hypothèse qu'il n'y aura aucun changement au mandat, au mandat actuel de la monnaie. Les principaux risques sont décrits dans le rapport annuel de la monnaie. Ces facteurs pourraient faire varier considérablement les résultats réels par rapport aux attentes explicites ou implicites formulées dans les énoncés prospectifs. I am pleased to provide highlights of our 2020 financial results and our outlook for 2021. Overall, the Mint delivered $27.5 million in profit before taxes and other items in 2020, down $14.8 million from last year. For a large part of 2020, the Mint proactively managed the COVID-19 pandemic to prevent cases in its production facilities. The Mint focused its production capacity to serve the mining and financial sectors in Canada and around the world 
and with its agility, was able to capitalize on the exceptional increase in global bullion market demand and increased its total revenue 74% to $2.5 billion in 2020. Canadian circulation revenue decreased 8% in 2020 to $88 million. The decrease was mainly due to lower volume of coins produced and sold to the Department of Finance. Combined with lower fixed cost build under the current Memorandum of Understanding and lower revenue from the Alloy Recovery Program. Reduced in-person economic activity due to the COVID-19 pandemic has decreased the overall demand for coins and at the same time decreased the supply of coins, which declined 38% to 1.9 billion coins. The Mint leveraged its coin lifecycle management expertise as its visibility to deposits and recycling to ensure regions were adequately stocked and coins were available to meet Canadians' trade and commerce needs throughout 2020. Foreign circulation business revenue was $64.2 million, down 2% from $65.4 million in 2019. The Mint shipped 838 million coins and blanks to 10 countries in 2020 and was awarded six new production contracts that totaled 1.5 billion coins. The Mint's agility allowed it to adapt to the increase in the global market demand for precious metals products in 2020 by shifting its focus to gold products and reallocating production resources from its numismatics business to its bullion products and services business to serve the mining and financial sectors during the pandemic period. The bullion products and services business revenues increased from $1.2 billion in 2019 to $2.3 billion in 2020. And the Mint maintained its strong bullion market position that year. The increase in revenue was attributed to exceptional global market demand, in particular for gold bullion products. Sales volumes of gold bullion products increased 103%, while silver bullion product sales volumes increased 30%. The average price for both gold and silver increased 27% last year. Numismatics revenues decreased 21% from $117 million in 2019 to $91.9 million in 2020. The temporary suspension of numismatics production from mid-March to late May during the year was the main driver of lower revenue. Operating expenses increased 4% in 2020 to $98.5 million uh, compared to 2019. As the Mint focused on enhanced organizational resiliency and the development of its updated long-term strategic vision and the strategy for the Mint's future business transformation. Les flux de trésorerie générés par les activités d'exploitation se sont établis à 36 millions de dollars pour 2020, ce qui représente une baisse de 21.1 millions comparativement à 2019. Cette baisse est principalement attribuable au moment des achats de stock, des encaissements auprès des clients et des paiements aux fournisseurs, partiellement compensés par la baisse des impôts sur le résultat payé en 2020. Le liquidité nécessaire pour financer les projets d'immobilisation ont diminué à 9,1 millions de dollars comparativement à 11,4 millions en 2019, grâce à l'évaluation constante des dépenses en immobilisation. I am proud that the Mint paid the Government of Canada a dividend of $20 million dollars in 2020, despite the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Mint's performance, as the Mint did not reduce any fixed costs during the period of suspended or modified production. Through the efficient management of coin supply, including new coin production balanced with recycling volumes of 96 million coins 
and interbank coin sales totaling 528 million coins. The Mint supported the Government of Canada in earning more than $2.6 million in seniorage on its sales of coins to financial institutions in 2020. Looking forward, the Mint's financial goal for 2021, as approved in the Mint's 2021 to 2025 corporate plan, is a profit before income tax and other items of $47.6 million. The Mint continues to focus its production capacity to serve the mining and financial sectors in Canada and around the world as global market demand for bullion products continues to be strong. In the first quarter of 2021, the Mint's profit before taxes and other items was $26 million, an increase of 300% from the first quarter of 2020. All of the Mint's businesses had a strong first quarter. In particular, revenue from bullion products and services increased 85% in the quarter. In 2021, the Mint is focused on the implementation of its One Mint strategic vision while continuing to work diligently to mitigate the impacts of COVID-19 on its business performance. While following government guidance and prioritizing health and safety of its employees, uh, the Mint is also making investments in 2021 as it plans and starts the implementation of its business transformation. As part of the business continuity plan, the Mint continues to actively monitor its global supply chain and logistics networks in support of its continued operation. Despite its best effort, the Mint expects COVID-19 to continue to affect its performance. Most recently, for example, uh, in light of the declaration of the emergency and province-wide stay-at-home order in Ontario, which began on April 8th. The situations in Ontario and Manitoba continue to be monitored, and the Mint will adapt its operations accordingly. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kemlon. Uh, it is now time for the question and answer period uh, and the portion that's the portion of our program. As I noted earlier, we have time to share a few with our audience, which will be answered by uh, Madame Lemay. The first question uh, that we've received is, why did the Mint cancel? Frederick Benting by removing him from the $2 circulation coin celebrating the discovery of insulin. Uh, Madame Lemay. Merci, Simon. Um, so I want to thank you for this question because it really does give me an opportunity to clarify uh, what I believe is a misunderstanding of how uh, the Mint designs this coin. Let me start by saying um, that we did not cancel Frederick Banting. No one has been removed from the coin design. So the, the way we do this is the Mint regularly consults external stakeholders to design the coins and to best tell the story of a given theme. And this time we worked very closely with the Banting House National Historic Site and the Diabetes Canada. And it was agreed from the beginning that the design should focus on the science behind Canadian discovery of insulin instead of the personalities of the four scientists who make it possible. But you can rest assured that the marketing campaigns behind this coin will bring out the full story of Frederick Banting, Charles Best, John McLeod, and James Collip as the key individuals who brought insulin to the world. There's gonna be extensive storytelling content. Um, it will be developed in collaboration with Banting House and Diabetes Canada. It will appear on mint.ca, social media platform. Uh, we'll have it on packaging related collector products. So uh, the story will be told. And uh, I really look forward to celebrating the story of the incredible made in Canada scientific breakthrough and the people behind it. So we'll do that next month when we launch, and um, I am looking forward to being able to share this beautiful piece. Thank you. Yes, yeah, see, uh, we have another question. Uh, this one concerning the current spike in demand for precious metals. Um, question is, is there a shortage of physical gold and or silver? 
If so, how long is the shortage expected to persist? And is it affecting mint delivery dates? Thank you for the question. I'm not sure if the question was, um, was related more to the investment side or to the numismatic uh, products, but so I will, I will answer for both. Um, our bullion business continues to experience high level of demand for precious metal coins and bars. Uh, we're not experiencing shortage of gold or silver, but the extreme high levels of demands for the minted bullion products do mean that we cannot always produce these finished products in the quantities demanded in the market at all times. But all accepted orders are fulfilled on a timely basis and as agreed with our distributors. So that's for the investment side. If we're looking at the numismatic side, uh, we did temporarily suspend production last year as we introduced health and safety measures related to COVID-19. And in the early days of the pandemic, we focused our resources, as we said earlier, on supporting the financials and mining sectors. Numismatic production resumed very quickly and continued throughout the pandemic. And our operations have since returned to normal. Uh, we did have challenges experienced by mail and courier service also. Um, they impacted the shipment of our customer orders as well, but the situation is also improving. So I think uh, everything is getting back on track, but I, I do want again to thank our, our loyal customers for their patience and their support. Um, and, and we really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And I'm moving on to uh, other questions. Uh, so a number of questions um, touching on coin themes. Um, and um, people would like to know if there could be more coins featuring music and sports legends, as well as more contemporary, uh, contemporary my apologies, uh, events. Uh, Madame Lumi? So uh, very, always a great topic, the coin themes. And um, I would start by saying that we welcome ideas from Canadians. Please uh, send in your ideas. We always welcome them. Uh, so I'd say that we, we are very proud to celebrate Canadian sport, cultural icons. We've done it in the past and we will continue to do so. Just last year, uh, you've heard that we recognized the 100th anniversary of the birth of the Haida artist Bill Reed. Um, uh, other recent examples uh, include Alice Munro and her Nobel Prize for Literature, the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, uh, speed skating legend Cindy Glasson, and we honored Wayne Gretzky on its 50th birthday. Um, but we, in our new One Mint strategy, our numismatic business strategy has shifted to delivering smaller, more resonant portfolio with a thoughtful mix of themes. Uh, culture, sport, and broad spectrum of history will continue to drive the celebration of Canadian culture and identity as we will keep focusing on satisfying the interest of our customers. So you please send your, your suggestions, your questions, your comments. Uh, the more we engage with you, the better we can serve you. Um. Thank you. Now, moving on to our uh, circulation coins. A collector, one of our collectors has this question. Um, I am not a fan of the mint marks that the mint has introduced on the $1 and $2 coins. I find that the circle with a modified maple leaf uh, in it destroys the simplicity and beauty of our coins. Is the mint mark intended to limit counterfeiting or is there a reason for its use uh, other than branding? Madame Nimi? Well, indeed, uh, the marks to which you refer are security marks, with, um, which enhance the security of our high value circulation coins. They are designed to prevent counterfeiting and they're not a branding device. They consist of a micro scale maple leaf image, which is produced by a laser engraving the reverse dies of our one and $2 circulation coin. And they're extremely difficult to duplicate and they make our circulation coin so very secure. Alors maintenant, euh, une question en français. Euh, 
qui nous parvient de un de nos collectionneurs qui aimerait savoir euh, la chose suivante. Et étant donné que vous n'avez pas organisé d'échange de pièces en ligne pour les pièces de circulation commémorative 2020, allez-vous tenir des échanges publics des pièces 2020 lorsque la situation sanitaire euh, le permettra? Alors, la première chose que je voudrais dire, c'est qu'on a bien hâte de pouvoir tenir les échanges de pièces. Euh, malheureusement, compte tenu des restrictions qui continuent d'être imposées en raison de la pandémie, euh, il est difficile de prévoir quand on va pouvoir recommencer. Alors, pour ce qui est des pièces 2020, euh, on a pris la décision de les mettre toutes en circulation afin de maximiser leur distribution à l'échelle nationale. Alors, au fur et à mesure que les commerces ouvrent leurs portes, euh, il va y avoir davantage de pièces qui vont se retrouver en circulation. Mais euh, comme je vous disais, dès qu'on peut, et on a très hâte, on va reprendre les échanges publics. Merci beaucoup de votre intérêt. Merci beaucoup, euh, Madame Lemay. Euh, chers auditeurs, euh, ceci conclut notre séance de questions. Before we start our virtual tour, uh, I wish to point out that we are replying directly by email to remaining questions that were submitted in advance of the meeting. Uh, merci à tous ceux qui nous ont écrit. J'aimerais également rappeler aux médias que toute demande de suivi peut être adressée à relationsmedia.monnaie.ca or media relations at mint.ca. This concludes the briefing portion of our annual public meeting. Now, for a little edutainment, I am pleased to introduce you to Réal Chartier, our customer experience ambassador for our Winnipeg boutique. Merci à tous et à toi, Réal. Merci, Simon. So hello, bonjour, welcome to the Royal Canadian Mint here in Winnipeg. As Simon mentioned, my name is Réal Chartier and I will be your tour guide for today on this virtual tour of the Royal Canadian Mint's Winnipeg facility. So today I'll be giving you a brief overview of the Mint's history as well as what we make here in our Winnipeg facility. So first, a little bit about me. I have worked on and off with the Mint since 2014, uh, first as a summer student and then as a permanent employee in the boutique and tours uh, for the last two years as I've been studying to become a high school teacher. Donc, comme vous le savez certainement, nous avons deux édifices de la Monnaie Royale canadienne au Canada. Donc, d'abord, la Monnaie Royale à Ottawa a ouvert ses portes il y a plus de 100 ans en 1908. Fait voir un peu l'image, ça a l'air un peu comme un, un château. Donc, la toute première pièce qu'on a frappée était le 50 cent par le gouverneur général Earl Grey. De nos jours, la monnaie à Ottawa se concentre plus sur les métaux précieux. Donc là, nous raffinons euh, les métaux précieux comme l'or et l'argent. Et nous allons fabriquer, par exemple, des pièces numismatiques, comme celle-ci. Donc, on peut voir, c'est une pièce 2 onces d'argent. Et je ne sais pas si vous pouvez voir, ça dit 30 dollars. Mais cette pièce-là, elle vaut beaucoup plus comme pièce de collection. Donc, ce serait fait à Ottawa. À Ottawa, on fabrique aussi des pièces d'investissement, comme des lingots d'or, des lingots d'argent, et aussi des médailles, comme les médailles olympiques des Jeux à Vancouver en 2010. So here in Winnipeg, we opened our doors 45 years ago in 1976. And for those of you who haven't seen it yet, here's a quick view of our building. So if we can show that video there. So you can see the mint has a pretty unique shape and I'll mention that in a moment here. Um, but I also want to point out all of the flags that we're going to be seeing in just a moment. So this is what you would see. It's on the east end of the city. So if you're ever coming from Ontario, the very first thing you see in Winnipeg is that beautiful mint building. So our building was designed by Franco Manitoban architect Etienne Gaboury. And I've heard it said that he wanted to create his own little mountain here in the city to contrast the flat plains of our prairie province. So here in Winnipeg, we are making all of Canada's circulation coins. So all of our nickels, dimes, quarters, loonies, toonies, 
And that being said, we don't just make Canadian coins here. In fact, those flags in the front, if you ever visit here, you'll drive through that parade of flags and they represent all the countries that we have made coins for. So we've made coins for nearly 80 countries around the world. And let me show you a few here. So this is, this is a few samples of the coins we've made. So here we've got some coins for New Guinea, for Barbados, which is actually our longest running contract. Been making coins for Barbados for over 30 years. We've got some coins for New Zealand. Some of those even have color on them for the United Arab Emirates. And that's just a few examples. Today in our facility, we are making coins for the Philippines, for Ethiopia, for Ghana, and we also strike in Canadian currency. Now to give you an idea, so we are a very high speed facility here. We can strike up to 15 million coins a day. In average, we'll do between one to two billion coins a year. Now let's go see how we actually make those Canadian coins. Donc, la première étape, c'est vraiment de choisir le motif pour la pièce. Donc, ici à la Monnaie royale canadienne, on choisit nos thèmes qui vont refléter à l'histoire, l'héritage canadien, les cultures, les valeurs et notre diversité. Puis, nous allons demander à des artistes de soumettre des dessins qui portent sur ce thème. Dans le passé, on a même ouvert ça au public parfois. Et on a ouvert des concours pour donner la chance à tous les Canadiens de partager qu ce qu'ils voudraient avoir sur une pièce. En 2017, pour célébrer le 150e anniversaire du Canada, nous avons ouvert un concours comme cela. Et la gagnante pour la pièce de 25 cents, c'est en effet une fille de 8 ans. Son nom, c'était Joël Wong. Donc, je vais vous montrer ça. Donc, ce 25 cents, on peut voir le JW pour ses initiales, aurait été une pièce faite par quelqu'un du public. Donc, une fois que le motif a été accepté, nous allons créer d'abord ce qu'on appelle le poinçon-maître. Et ce poinçon-maître-là, c'est vraiment l'étampe originale. Où est-ce que l'image apparaît, tout comme elle apparaîtrait sur la pièce. Donc, je sais que c'est difficile à voir un peu sur la caméra, mais je vais vous montrer un peu ça. Donc, ça, c'est le poinçon-maître dont l'image est identique à la pièce finale. Cette image est gravée à un ordinateur, puis il va y avoir une machine qui va graver euh, l'image sur une tige d'acier plaquée de titane. Deux points sont mètres sont fabriqués. Il y en a un qui va rester à Ottawa et l'autre est envoyé ici à Winnipeg. Donc, deux copies originales des poinçons. So, in Winnipeg, we're going to use this master punch, this normal looking image, which you would read from left to right. And we're going to create working dies, which have the mirror or the negative image on them. So we do this by shaving a cone on rods of steel. They would look like this. So those are cone-shaped steel rods there. And then we'll take that cone of steel and we're going to press it into the master punch. And when you press it with about 300 tons of pressure, when you remove it, you end up having the negative, the mirror image on that working die. So we've got the original looking master punch and we've got the reverse image, the negative image on that working die. And we want this negative image because when it's going to go strike the coins in the machines, the image, when it's struck, will revert back to its positive side. Now, these working dies are going to be polished and hardened before going to strike the image on coins. Now, seeing as a single pair of dies in our machines will strike up to 14 coins a second, these dies are typically changed at least once or twice a day. The used dies are going to be shaved down and the steel will be recycled. Now, a little uh, fun story here. So did you know that the image on our $1 coin was not supposed to be that of the loon? So the iconic Lumi was not the original plan. In fact, when we created the $1 coin in 1987 to replace the $1 bill, it was supposed to have this image here, which some of you may recognize as the silver dollar image, that of the voyageur and the indigenous man in a canoe paddling down a river. So what happened is we made the master punch in Ottawa, as always, and it had this image on there. And the master punch was sent from Ottawa to Winnipeg. But this time, the master punch never arrived in Winnipeg. 
So instead of risking the possibility of someone counterfeiting our new $1 coins, we decided to change the image completely from the canoe to the loon. So had this ever happened, who knows? Maybe instead of the loony, we would have the canoey. Um, that being said, either way, the master punch has never been found to this day. We still don't really know where it is. Now, as I'm passing by, I'm just going to show one of the rooms here. So the total area of the plant is about three football fields in size. So we won't get to see all of it in detail, but this here is our machine shop. Donc, c'est ici où on fait uh, le maintien, les réparations. Et on a beaucoup de machines assez dispendieuses ici à la Monnaie Royale. Donc, ça nous sauve beaucoup de temps et beaucoup d'argent lorsqu'on fait les réparations sur les lieux ici à Winnipeg. La prochaine étape va être le découpage des flancs. Donc, un flanc, c'est vraiment, euh, c'est juste une pièce sur laquelle il n'y a pas encore une image. Donc, depuis 2001, nos pièces de circulation sont en majorité faites d'acier. Donc, l'acier vient en grand rouleau. Je vais venir vous montrer ces rouleaux-là. Et les rouleaux pèsent environ... Je m'excuse pour ça, donc je vais continuer d'où j'étais. Euh, ouais, je, suis, je marche beaucoup ici, donc euh, quand vous venez pour une visite, vous pouvez voir vraiment tout ça en personne. Mais je vais continuer. Donc, les rouleaux ici, c'est des grands rouleaux d'acier. Donc, ces rouleaux-là pèsent jusqu'à 5000 livres, donc environ le même poids qu'un petit éléphant ou un camion. Donc, c'est des grands rouleaux d'acier. Avec ces rouleaux-là, nous allons découper des flancs. Donc, je vais vous montrer ça. Donc, on va dérouler, ça va faire une feuille d'acier comme ça, puis par la suite, nous allons découper. Donc, ça a l'air un peu comme si on coupait des biscuits ou des, des trous dans du papier. Et ça, c'est les retailles qu'on va avoir. Donc, tous les trous, ce sont des flancs qu'on a découpés. Donc, encore à ce point-ci, il n'y a pas d'image sur les pièces, c'est tout simplement un, un, un flanc sans image. Je vais vous montrer un peu à quoi ça a l'air. Donc, ces flancs, ce serait un peu comme chose comme ceci. Donc, pas d'image, mais c'est simplement un disque d'acier. Donc, comme j'avais mentionné, depuis 2001, toutes nos pièces sont faites en majorité d'acier. On va plaquer d'autres couches par-dessus, mais je vais parler de ça dans quelques minutes. Chacune de nos presses peut découper jusqu'à 250 000 flancs à l'heure. Donc, c'est vraiment rapide. Et environ 80 du rouleau est utilisé. Les restants, les retails vont se faire recycler. Donc, on va renvoyer ça pour recycler. So, after cutting the blanks, the next step is to raise the edge in our rimming machines. So, have you ever noticed how all of your coins have a little raised edge around them? Adding a rim is very important because it will smooth any abrasive edges to protect our pockets and our fingers. And rimming also ensures the diameter of the blanks is consistent. Finally, the raised rim will also serve to protect the image on the finished coin and to reduce the wear. Because as you can see, when you put a coin down on a table, it's the rim and not the image. It's actually sitting on the surface. And so when you're sliding that coin around, the image isn't fading as quickly and it helps it last a lot longer. On some coins, we will also add edge lettering which is a similar process where we add lettering around the circumference of the coin. So for example, on the Canadian $2, it says $2 Canada on the edge. And we do that simply by rolling the coin and pressing the letters onto that side there. Donc, une fois qu'on a coupé nos flancs d'acier et nous avons ajouté le cordon, nous allons finalement ajouter les différentes couches de métal sur nos pièces. Et ici, à la monnaie royale, nous avons breveté une technologie de plaquage multicouche. Donc, nous allons mettre trois lisières sur notre morceau d'acier. Donc, je ne vais pas aller en trop, trop de détails. Le processus d'électroplaquage est très chimique et je suis certain que vous ne voulez pas entendre les détails sur ça. Mais pour donner une idée générale, nous allons charger l'acier négativement. Donc, ces centres d'acier vont être chargés négativement et vont ensuite être plongés dans une série de bains où il y a d'autres métaux chargés positivement. Par exemple, nous allons prendre l'acier et le plonger dans un bain de, de nickel positif. 
Et le nickel positif va être attiré à l'acier négatif qui va faire une couche de plaquage. Maintenant, chaque lisière est environ 10 fois plus mince que du papier. Donc, c'est vraiment, vraiment mince. Et ici, je vous montre une photo qui montre un peu euh, une coupe d'une pièce. Donc, ici, ce serait une pièce comme le 25 cents où on a l'acier dans le centre, puis trois couches. Donc, le nickel, le cuivre et une autre couche de nickel. Pour les pièces euh, comme le 1 où il y a du jaune à l'extérieur, ça, c'est du laiton. Donc, ce serait la même chose. Donc, acier, nickel, cuivre. Ensuite, ce serait du laiton au lieu de la couche de nickel. Pour le 2 c'est un peu différent parce que le centre est en effet coupé d'aluminium, euh, de bronze d'aluminium. Donc, c'est euh, un centre un peu différent là-dedans. Maintenant, ces trois couches, ce, ce plaquage multicouche, comme on l'appelle, rend les flancs plus durables, les rend plus difficiles à copier, donc à, à faire des fausses copies, et les rend moins chers à fabriquer. Donc, c'est pour ça qu'on fait ça depuis 2001 dans nos pièces de circulation. Cela étant dit, le plaquage, c'est vraiment l'étape qui prend le plus de temps. Donc, c'est la seule étape de travail, 24 heures sur 24, 7 jours par semaine ici à Winnipeg. Maintenant, j'ai une petite histoire que je veux partager au sujet de la pièce d'un million de dollars. So, I'm going to show you the million dollar coin. And that is the biggest gold coin the mint has ever made. It was a diameter of 50 centimeters across and weighs 100 kilograms. So let me show you this picture here. So this is the biggest gold coin we have ever made. And in fact, we were the first mint to ever make coins out of 5.9 gold which means that it's 99.999% pure. And honestly, when we made this coin, it was kind of the mint showing the world that we could do. It wasn't meant to be sold, but it did say $1 million on there. So the gold was actually worth over $7 million today in that coin. Now, we weren't planning on selling that coin, um, but people came forward. People wanted to buy it. So we decided to make four more. One of those is uh, still kept at the Mint, the original. One of them is in the Royal Ontario Museum. Um, another one was apparently bought by a prince in Dubai who used it as a coffee table. Not too sure if that's true or not. Um, and then one of them was actually in the Bode Museum in Berlin until it was stolen in 2017. Now, the thieves were caught, but the coin was never recovered. Now, finally, after cutting, after rimming, plating, and even polishing our blanks, we finally come to the coining steps. This is in this area here of the plant. And this is where the blanks are going to become legal tender. They're going to become officially coins. So the blanks come in on a white conveyor belt at the top of the machines, and they will get dropped into those blue presses. Each one of those presses, those MRVs as we call them, will strike up to 14 coins a second. And again, that's with one pair of dies in each machine. So each machine will strike 14 coins a second. And usually every row is doing a kind of coin. So usually in this first row, blue machines will be doing coins for Canada. And then I think right now in the cells further back, they're doing the coins for Ghana and different rows will do different coins. Now, when it's being struck, The two dies will strike at the same time with about 150 tons of pressure. So both the obverse and the reverse, both sides of the coin are at the same time. And there are four things for Canadian coins that we need for aspects that must be included for it to be legal tender. We need to include the effigy of the monarch. We need to have the, den the, the denomination, so the face value. We need to have the year and we need to say Canada on there. So those four things need to be on there, otherwise we can't call it a coin. That's why even that numismatic, even that silver coin I showed earlier on, had those four aspects. Otherwise, it's a collector token or a medallion, but not a collector coin. Now, as the images are being imprinted onto the coin, the coin is also being pushed outwards. So as the two dies strike, the coin pushes out into a collar. And this collar is what holds the coin in place and what will give it the outside edging. So if you've ever noticed, all of your coins have a little sort of edging around them. Some are serrated, some are smooth, and coins have different edgings 
so that they can be identified by those who are visually impaired. So for example, the 25 cents has a serrated edge, while the 11, uh, sorry, while the $1 has 11 smooth sides and the $2 has an alternating smooth serrated edge. As they're struck, an employee will visually inspect the coins before they make their way to packaging or pad printing if we were to add color. Donc, parlant un peu de la couleur, nous étions la première monnaie dans le monde à créer des pièces de circulation colorée. La toute première, c'était ce coquelicot en 2004. Au début, on utilisait la technologie um, inkjet. Donc, c'était un jet d'encre qui allait mettre cette couleur sur la pièce. Mais depuis 2015, on utilise maintenant la tampographie, qui utilise plutôt un étampe ou un tampon comme ceci, qui est fait de silicone, qui va prendre la couleur et l'appliquer sur la pièce. Ceci, ça permet de faire beaucoup plus de détails et beaucoup plus de couleurs. On peut faire jusqu'à cinq couleurs et c'est comme ça qu'on aurait, par exemple, peinturé cette pièce de 2017 avec plus de détails et plus de couleurs. Donc, une fois que les pièces sont peinturées, on va cuire cette peinture et finalement, on va emballer. Donc, notre processus d'emballage varie vraiment d'un pays à l'autre et ça se passe dans ce bout de l'usine. Donc, certains pays vont demander que les pièces se font compter et rouler. Donc, c'est comme ça qu'on fait pour le Canada. Les rouleaux vont se faire mettre dans des boîtes de carton et vont être enveloppés euh, de plastique. Pour les pièces internationales, on va habituellement les mettre dans des sacs puis dans des caisses de bois. Par la suite, ça va se faire envoyer outre-mer, mais ce n'est pas envoyé par avion, c'est juste beaucoup trop lourd pour faire ça. Donc, les pièces vont être envoyées par euh, camion, par train, par bateau, tout partout au Canada et partout dans le monde. So, a few frequently asked questions from our visitors here. So, does a rural Canadian mint make Canadian banknotes? No. So, the mint does not make the bills, as we often call them. The banknotes are made by the Bank of Canada. And sometimes people ask, how many visitors do we get here in Winnipeg? So, we usually get about 60 to 80,000 visitors a year. Um, Sometimes when there's special uh, events happening, like in 2010 for the Olympics, there were definitely a lot more visitors that year, but it's uh, generally between 60 to 80,000. Now I've got one more story here to wrap up the tour about this 2004 poppy again. Now, when this poppy first came out in 2004, there was a foreign defense contractor visiting Canada. Now he ended up receiving one of these coins in his pocket change, probably through Tim Hortons because it was actually through those restaurants that the Mint put out these coins that year. Now, at first, this uh, contractor did not notice the paint on the, on the coin. But a few weeks later, when he was back in his own country, he ended up noticing the color. Now, he had never heard of a colored coin. He had never seen a colored coin because, again, it was the first in the world. And seeing as he worked in high-level security, he was a little suspicious. And he thought someone may have hidden something in the paint. So he had this coin sent to a laboratory. He had it checked out for a microchip, for a GPS, for a camera. He realized in the end that it was just paint and we're just crazy Canadians who like colored money. But since then, we've nicknamed this the spy coin. There's a little story there to end off the tour. So with that, our abbreviated tour comes to an end. Thank you so much for joining me on this virtual tour of the Royal Canadian Mint in Winnipeg. I hope one day you can visit us in person. So I wish you all a wonderful day. Thanks for joining the annual public meeting of the Mint. Thank you. Merci et bonne journée.